Hello, this is Tatiana with Happiness Homemade for You. This is going into my, I think I'm going to change the name to Badass ABCs for adults. Okay, so thank you everybody who's been sending me messages. Uh, I have been busy. So uh, I am actually here to discuss why I've been busy and do kind of like a mm, voting 101. Quick quick crash course. Okay, so the dealio is I'm a little bit grayer since you last saw me, uh, but my teeth are straighter. On my way, got some braces. Okay, so uh, I've been interrupted for like a year or more uh, from posting videos. I want you to know that I do have a contract pending on a video production studio so that I can make it better but hopefully I'll be continuing to post some rough drafts here on the YouTube page. So, um, oh, I shouldn't do that while I'm recording. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe to the page and you will get an email when I post. So I'm really hoping about three months. But I got to give some creds to one of the people who had emailed me. Uh, while they were waiting for videos, they searched, well they knew the alphabet and then they were having difficulty with letters when you put them together which are called digraphs. So they taught themselves. Okay, I'm like seriously impressed. So mm, the advice that I would give you is to just, um, for those of you who already know the alphabet um, and you can sound out those sounds, I recommend doing what they did, which is to um, look up what digraphs are and study your brains out. Now, this person was seriously motivated. In fact, they sent me a recommendation to give to all of you. Um, Eric Thomas as a, a motivational speaker. So I got to say, I listened to Eric Thomas and I'm like, I got to do some video now. I got to try. Keep trying. Okay. So this is my quick explanation. Uh, the community that I moved to, the library closed. Uh, it was funded by county funding, and the county removed funding for all of the libraries. That was 11 libraries in our county. And so I volunteered as the library director um, and joined an awesome team of volunteers. I call them heroes. And uh, we have been raising money to save our library and to keep it open and functioning. And as we've gone along, I've learned a lot about politics. <sighs> not as easy as learning how to read, is what I gotta say. It's not fun. Okay, so hopefully I'll get back to doing videos and make uh, reading fun. <laughs> okay, in the meantime, we are on the ballot. That was a massive amount of work. Okay, so I have actually heard since we've been campaigning, that a lot of people are intimidated by the voting process. So I got my ballot in the mail. I live in the state of Oregon. We all have to vote either by mail or by putting it in a ballot box, as opposed to some states you have to go in and fill your ballot out on a machine, all that kind of stuff. I don't know what your state has. Okay, so since we're just doing a voting 101 vid, you can contact your, okay, for this, uh, for, for us, to get voter assistance, you contact the Secretary of State Elections Department. I called my state library, and I just called them because I had no idea. Who do I contact? And they recommended contacting the state, Secretary of State Elections Division and the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters, at least here in Oregon, records uh, audio. They do audio recording of everything that's at the state level. Okay, so my ballot issue is a local issue. Therefore, there is no audio recording. And it's been frustrating and I'm not gonna start whining now. Okay, first off, when you get your voters ballot, if you don't know, remember, I do not want to demean people who do know how to do this, but if you don't, this is just Crash Course 101. Okay, you get it in the mail and you open it up. Okay, and of course, get some assistant, make sure it's addressed to you. <laughs> Don't fill somebody else's ballot out. Okay, so here in the state of Oregon, what you get is three pieces. 
you're going to have, let me set this down. Okay, you're going to have your voter ballot. Okay, so find somebody. Excuse me, we're doing a video. No. Excuse me. Okay, and what you're going to do is you are going to have your friend or assistant. Sorry. Make sure that you are marking the person that you want. So, for example, Commissioner of the Bureau of Labor and Industries. I'm going to open up my voters pamphlet and read about Lou Ogden, Van Val Hoyle, and Jack Howard. So, I don't know much about these people, so I would have to have someone read my voters pamphlet to me. And I'm going to color in the circle. Okay, I'm going to go through and color in every box. Personally, if I don't know, I don't vote. You know, if there's something that I truly, truly, truly don't know, I'd rather I personally choose to not vote and leave that vote up to people who do know what they're voting about. But that's just personal. Remember, you can vote any way that you like. Okay, but if you want your vote counted, to ensure your vote counts, completely fill in the circle to the left of the response of your choice. Use a pencil or pen, blue or black. Do not cut, tear, or damage your ballot. Attention, remember to inspect your ballot for mistakes. If you make a mistake or have questions, you call your county elections office at such and such for your state. Okay, so make sure that whoever is assisting you lets you know exactly what you use to uh, fill in your ballot. You never know. If it goes through a machine, maybe it, maybe it doesn't read pencil, maybe it doesn't read pen. Make sure that someone is, is guiding you exactly how or what material you use to color in your circles. And of course, to vote for a write-in candidate, there's always a blank at the bottom if you want to write someone in. Nope been a while since I've done videos. This one doesn't know how to behave. Okay, so, um, and a write-in, um, oh, there's my boyfriend on the ballot. Okay, I got distracted. Okay, so, you're going to completely color in the circle of anything that you want. Now, notice, Okay, at the bottom for us here in Oregon, it says, thank you for voting. Check your ballot for errors. Place your ballot in the secrecy and signature envelope provided by the county. Sign the return envelope. Return your ballot by mail or to an official ballot box or drop, drop site location. Your ballot must be received in the county elections office or official ballot box by 8 p.m. on election day. This is very important too. Not just your vote, and doing the paperwork correctly, but make sure that your vote gets there in time. So, this is, uh, it's April 30th, 2018. Here is my calendar for May. Here's May 1, okay. We were going to vote yes on our library district. Okay, our ballots are due on the 15th. Most likely, if you are voting uh, right now in May, your ballots are going to be due May 15th. By May 10th, that's Thursday, and I want to make sure wherever I live, because we live in rural areas in Oregon, that it makes it from post office to post office to post office all the way up to our county seat in time. So I'm recommending here in the state of Oregon that after the 10th, take it to the ballot box. I have voted and received my ballot back after the election saying that it didn't count because it didn't make it in time. And that's a horrible feeling. That is a horrible, horrible feeling that my vote didn't count because I missed the deadline, even though I sent it in days earlier. Okay? So make sure, like I said, especially here in the state of Oregon, that you mail it in, uh, excuse me, that you go to a ballot box Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because it needs to be at the courthouse Friday at 8 p.m excuse me, Tuesday at 8 p.m. So here in our community, just go to the ballot box is my recommendation. I just want everybody's vote to be counted. Okay, here we go. 
Sorry for going back and forth on local and state um, voting issues, but it's important to me. Okay, especially because once we pass this measure, I can go back to my life <laughs> and doing videos. Okay, here we go. So I've circled everything in, colored everything in, each one that I chose, made sure that I had somebody read everything to me without inflection about what they want me to vote for. And it's done. Now notice, there's nothing on here that has my name on it. There is nothing on here. There's no number. There is nothing that indicates that this is Tatiana's. It is anonymous. Your vote is anonymous. This is how you ensure that your vote is anonymous and it's counted. It was mailed to you, the registered voter. What they do to make sure that you can keep your anonymity but still make sure that it was you who voted. You fill it all out, and then you're gonna put it in, here in the state of Oregon, what they call the secrecy envelope. Okay, so I put it in there, and it gives me another warning. Needs to be in the ballot box by 8 p.m. on the 15th. Over here, it's giving you, again, your, invo your voting instructions. Make sure you completely filled out the oval. If you vote for more candidates than you were allowed, for example, three people are running, you can only vote for one, but you accidentally voted for two. If you vote for more candidates than allowed, or if you vote both yes and no on a measure, it's called an overvote, and your vote will not count for that candidate or measure. So be very, very careful. You do not have to vote on all contests, right? I told you I personally choose not to if I don't know what I'm voting about. And those you do vote on will still be counted. You don't have to vote on everything in order for the things that you did vote on to be counted. If you make a mistake or your ballot is damaged or you need assistance, you may contact your elections office for a new ballot. Okay, most likely you might have to run up to your county offices and, and get another ballot. Okay, but they are just saying be very, very careful because it's going to be counted by a machine, people. So, okay, now returning the ballot, place your ballot in the secrecy envelope. Place the sealed secrecy envelope in the, identif the identification envelope and seal the envelope. So I have to seal this one. And here is what they called your return identification envelope. Okay, remember they need to have this official envelope that's going to have your return address. Your information is on this envelope. This one is sealed and check out how it works. It's sealed and anonymous. Nothing on here except the instructions. And then I'm going to seal this my return address in case anything goes wrong so I vote early. If it comes back in the mail to me, I want a second chance if I screwed something up. You have to put a stamp on it. If you are not taking it to the ballot box, you have to put a stamp on it. For us, um, in my community, um, uh, our courthouse has a ballot box. Um, some libraries have ballot boxes in them. And um, if you don't know, contact the your county or your state elections office, whatever you need to do to find out where it's located. Even your state library should be able to help you find that information. Okay, so I put my secrecy envelope in here so that I'm anonymous, sealed it here, and it's got my voter information on it. So this identifies that it's me, but you have to sign. You need to put your signature here. Sign here, voter statement. By signing, I certify that. I am a U.S. citizen. I am the person to whom this ballot was issued. I am legally qualified to vote in the county that issued this ballot. This is the only ballot I have voted for this election, and I still live where I am registered to vote. Now remember, this is your signature, whether or not you know how to write. An X, if that is your signature, is an acceptable signature. Does that make sense? 
if an X is your signature, then put an X. Whatever is your used signature, if you have a state ID or a state driver's license, um, whatever you've been using for your official signature is the signature that would be when you registered to vote. When you registered to vote, you sign that paper. In case of a question, they're going to compare your signature to what you submitted when you got your voter registration. Okay? So do your best to keep your signature straight. Okay. All right. And then you, like I said, yep, put it in the ballot box or um, make sure that you have a stamp. For some reason, my voter's pamphlet said to put a forever stamp on it. I don't know why it says to use a particular stamp, but just make sure that you have the right postage. Okay, and send it in early, as early as you can, in case anything goes wrong, you have time for, to get it back, okay? All right, I hope that was helpful. It's very important to me, and it occurred to me that I really hope, whether or not you are still learning to read, that you are um, exercising your right to vote. Okay, so wish us luck <laughs> on our local library measure so that they can hire a director and I can continue, I can do some volunteering at the library, but I can go back to what I was focused on, which is producing videos for uh, educational purposes. And um, again, thank you for all of you who have found me on the Facebook page. I think I have apologized to every single person who's messaged me <laughs> that, that uh, I know you're waiting. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you for everybody who's been thinking outside the box and continuing to educate themselves. Okay. Thank you, and keep your eyes open. Badass ABCs for adults coming sooner than I hope. <laughs>